What is it like to watch someone die? To most people, it's heart-wrenching. Yet on that good Friday when our Lord Jesus died, there were those who sat unmoved and satisfied as they watched him die on that cross. Matthew chapter 27, verse 26 says, Then Pilate released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. You have to understand that a Roman flogging often killed the men who underwent it. It was that severe. The Bible says, Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium, gathered a whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took a staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. The great tragedy of the ages is almost over. The nails have been driven home. The cross has been lifted up as Jesus hangs suffering between heaven and earth. A great crowd of people covers the hillside watching him. Some of them looked at Jesus as their enemy and saw him die with satisfaction. Curious visitors who had come to Jerusalem for the Passover saw a man who had been caught up in the grip of Roman justice. They didn't even know his name unless someone had told them. They had nothing better to do for a few hours. It would be interesting to watch how a man died. And then there were those who were his disciples and his friends who watched him die as their beloved friend, their master, their teacher, their Messiah. They watched him die with broken hearts and shattered hopes. What do we see as we watch Jesus die? We can see what they did not. We have an understanding that even some of them didn't even fathom. We have an idea and an understanding of what was going on because we see through the eyes of the New Testament Scripture. We have an understanding of what happened at Calvary that they did not have. But what do we see as we watch Jesus die? We see suffering. We see love. We see victory and we see a great salvation. In the death of Jesus, we see immeasurable suffering. Yes, many have suffered, but no one has suffered like the Lord Jesus Christ. He suffered shame and humiliation. The prophet Isaiah foretold his shame when he wrote, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Jesus was mocked and ridiculed. He was labeled as an unclean criminal. He suffered loneliness. He had to pray alone. He had to stand trial alone. He had to die alone. Not even his father was there. God the Father couldn't remain even in the presence of his own beloved son with a human sin remaining on him. So he turned his back. The son in that darkest hour reached for the father. He was not there. And the cry was wrung from his lip, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In all of history of the universe, there has never 
been such lowliness as that. He suffered physical pain. The cross has been described as the cruelest, most agonizing, inhumane instrument of torture that man has ever devised. Our Lord Jesus Christ suffered that. He suffered spiritual torment. Why did Jesus say in the garden, my father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. It wasn't the physical agony or the shame. It was the fact that upon his pure, spotless, sinless, stainless soul, he would bear the whole black mass of human sin. This is infinite suffering far beyond human comprehension. But in the death of Jesus, we see amazing love. On the cross, Jesus demonstrated love. In, in this day of selfish motives and self-centeredness, God's love shines brightly through His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus' love and sacrifice goes beyond any other. He suffered and died for His enemies. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We are unbelievers without excuse. We were enemies. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. Yet through his love and grace, God reached down to lift us up out of death and darkness through faith in his son, Jesus Christ. Oh, what love! What wondrous love that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this. In the death of Jesus, we see victory over hell. God announced his plan for saving the world, and it was through the death of his son upon the cross. Satan, the enemy, knew about that plan, and he was determined to defeat God's plan. Satan brought forth every trick he knew in order to defeat God's plan. Satan sent soldiers of Herod to kill Jesus as a babe in Bethlehem, but God delivered him. Satan tried to destroy Jesus through temptation. That temptation was sharp. It was powerful. It was real. Yet Jesus was triumphant. Satan tried again through mankind to kill Jesus. He put into the hearts of wicked men to stone Jesus. He put into the hearts of wicked men to throw Jesus off a cliff. But each time their purpose was defeated. Satan tried to turn to Jesus from the cross by using one of his closest friends, the Apostle Peter. He tried one final time. He tried to frighten Jesus out of his purpose in the Garden of Gethsemane. The full horror of the cross was brought to him, but Jesus was fully surrendered to his Father's will. Oh, the battle was won that night. From that moment, unafraid, Jesus went straight forward to the cross to fulfill the great purpose for which he was born, to give his life a ransom for sinners such as I. As human beings look upon Calvary, it may seem that that was hell's finest hour, its greatest victory, when actually it was hell's greatest defeat. The enemy had failed in his purpose to keep Jesus from the cross. And when Jesus cried out, it is finished, it was a cry of victory. You notice Jesus didn't say, I am finished. He says, it is finished. Well, what was finished? His sufferings, Satan, sin's power, all were finished. And that is a statement of victory. In the death of Jesus, we see great salvation. We are saved by substitution. 1 Peter chapter 5, or excuse me, chapter 3, verse 18 says, for Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, in order that he may bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive 
in the Spirit. Think about that, friend. Jesus Christ, the innocent one, dying for the guilty. Jesus, the righteous one, dying for the sinful. Jesus Christ, the just one, giving his life for the unjust. Jesus stood in our place. The cross was ours. We deserve the disgrace of it. We deserve to be banished from the presence of God. Everyone in this world deserves hell. We are all sinners. But Jesus Christ came to deliver us from that condition. He took our place. This is the heart of the gospel. Now there's three possibilities and three possible attitudes toward Jesus. And these attitudes were represented by various groups of people that were present that day on Calvary. There was hostility and hate, mere curiosity and difference, and love and trust. In which group do you find yourself today? We see much as we watch Jesus die, don't we? We see immeasurable suffering, amazing love, complete victory over sin, and great salvation. As the old song says, it is finished. The battle is over. It is finished. There'll be no more war. It is finished. The end of the conflict. It is finished. And Jesus is Lord. What do you see as you watch Jesus die? Regardless of what you do with Jesus today, may you never forget what he did for you on the cross. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for what you accomplished on the cross of Calvary. Thank you that you took our place, Lord Jesus. Thank you that although it is what we call Good Friday, the day that you died on the cross for our sins, the day that you were laid in the tomb, it is Friday, but as an old preacher said, Sunday is coming when we will celebrate your glorious resurrection. Thank you today, Jesus. We love you. It's in your name and for your sake we pray. Amen. God bless you.